Hi guys, uh, my name is John. Um, hopefully this will be the first video in a series on Xamarin Forms. Alright, let me have a quick rundown on Xamarin Forms. In case you don't know, I'm going to use this slide stolen from James Montemagno. Great guy by the way. So let's come with this. So, one of the major issues with app developers and mobile developers is the issue of having to code for different platforms. So, I'm going to be a mobile developer, I have to code, learn to code for iOS, Android, Windows, Blackberry, Tizen, there are many platforms out there. So using iOS, I have to learn Objective-C on Xcode, on Android, Java with Android Studio, Windows, c and Visual Studio, they are the three powerhouse of the mobile developers. So the first is, is a normal issue, having to learn different languages. Yeah, you're a cool guy, you know a lot of language, but come on, we all know it's stressful. So there can be silent approach. Uh, where you have to learn everything all at once, jumble up your HTML and CSS, and using an app generator, a magic black box, you get stuff out for your iOS, Android, and Windows. Yeah, it's fine, it, it works fine, but it was way limited. You have limited API access, slow performance, and poor user experience because it was basically jumbling a HTML page to make an app, and you can all imagine how that would look like. So, here comes Amarin on the White House. So, you have a common back backend on C sharp and then you have your UI for iOS for Android and your Windows. So actually Xamarin has traditional Xamarin and Xamarin forms. I'm gonna talk on Xamarin form, but this is traditional approach. So each UI has a shared back end. So your business logic is common. Say you need to have a database. It's one database you're running, you access it once from all platforms. So you don't need to code a different back end for iOS for Android for you for Windows so you just have a shared back end and then you can access it from your iOS UI Android UI and your Windows UI and you're pretty good to go so I've run a yeah, the C sharp code base 100% native API as it run 100% native so the feel and everything is like yeah an Android and iOS app a Windows app and it gives high performance so Xamarin approach is actually traditional Xamarin and then there's Xamarin forms. I'm going to get to forms later, but let's go on Xamarin. So you had, I've spoken about back end, but then on the server side, you can have Azure with the C-Sharp back end. So pretty much with C-Sharp and Azure, you can rule the world. It's, it's, it's that easy and it's that fun. So while working with Xamarin, you have the full back of, backup of .NET. So for .NET developers, you understand what I mean, but if you are not a .NET developer, this is the time to be a .NET developer. It's awesome like that. So with C Sharp, you have a link support, link language integration query. Think of link like your SQL statement. So the way you query your SQL tables, you can query generics on C Sharp like that. So your list, your array, your... Uh... Okay, I can't really remember what I want to say now. But you can query your list, your tables, with like that on C sharp. So you have a list, you can have a selection where from P in table person, where P is ID. This is going to select all members of person where the ID is equal to the variable ID. And then it's, you can return it to a list or wherever it is you're adding into collection. That's what we're looking for before collection. So you work with XML easily and then you can handle event and delegate way easily. Then there's JSON. We all know JSON is quite getting popular these days than XML. So with Xamarin and C Sharp, you can actually use JSON.NET to pass JSON. There's others out there. NewtonSoft.json.net will get there. Yep, you can pass JSON easily and accessible with Xamarin. So this is a sample code for on Objective C, and then with Xamarin. So you can see the difference even without me trying to. Okay, before I go further, this tutorial is going to be mainly for total noobs and like whoever is interested in Xamarin. So you have to bear with me because I'm going to try and simplify a lot of terms. I'm going to try and use a bunch of layman languages. So bear with me a bit for those who are not the noob. But for the noob, yay. Alright, so this is a simple class. Looking at it merely on Objective-C is looking complicated. Why on c -sharp you have the properties and then it's just awesome like that with properties and all that. Then you have delegates. Um, okay, it's cool with c -sharp. So c also has async and await methods for handling thread. You don't want to lag your, your UI UI processing stuff behind. Okay, there's still more on integrating C-Sharp. Advantage of C-Sharp rather. 
So this simple code on Objective C using await method, it gets easier. You can add it is an animation code here. Then here's the difference on Java and Android. So handling an item click listener, if coming from Android, you'll be familiar with this. Handling an item click listener for a list view, this is how it works on Java. And in C sharp, using async and await is this easier and faster. So your UI is not it doesn't lag and it's, it's just awesome like that. So here's how it works pretty much. You have your .NET C sharp binding, same on iOS and Android. iOS does full ahead of time compilation to Britain ARM binding for Apple's App Store. It's that easy. There's no much mystery behind this statement. As the statement is, that's how it really is. On Android, it uses the just in time compilation on Android to make its APK, and we're all good. So here comes Xamarin Forms, the knight in shiny armor. So with traditional Xamarin approach, I made mention of shared backend, but each individual UI. So you have to still code your UI for your the iOS, for your Windows, and for your Android. But then with Xamarin Forms, everything is shared, 100% shared, totally shared. You have your shared backend, shared UI. So all you need your app, your OS, is just to run your app. Is that easy? Xamarin Forms comes with 40 plus pages, layers, and control built from code behind the XAML. Two way data binding. If you're, on, if you're a Windows developer, a Delta developer, you'll be familiar with data binding. It's really great like that. The navigation, animation, API, dependency service. So, in as much as we have shared everything, you may still want a particular feature on a particular platform. So, you might as well want the floating action button on Android. You may want the tiling on Windows effect. So using dependency service, you can actually inject particular code on particular platforms. We'll get there in, C in this series. Then, pages and layouts. So every app is a combination of pages and layouts. Pages are, think of it like pages contain layouts. So it's kind of a hierarchy. You have your app, you have pages, you have a page, then you have layout, nested layouts. We have a content page. Content page is a normal content page. You have a master detail page. This is a navigation page for like a normal navigation drawer, slide out, slide in with a bunch of elements here. Navigation page using a stack, you can pop and push items. Tab page is getting quite popular these days. Most chat sites have tab page. WhatsApp, Telegram comes with tab page. Carousel page, think of carousel page like it's a tab page, but it's just very slicker. We get to explain all of this, so let's not confuse much. Then come to layout. We have stack layout. Stack layout it arranges its children in either horizontal or vertical in a straight line with space in between them. You can customize the spacing in between them. You have absolute layout. Absolute layout is more of a canvas. It's not really a canvas, but think of it like a canvas. You position elements based on their coordinates in, on the page, on the layout. Relative layout, as name implies, you place children relative to each other. To the parent, to the root, to other objects. Then grid. Grid divides a layout in rows and columns to place items. You can span uh, a child to fill in more rows or more columns or both. Content view is a default layout. You can pretty much, it's just a blank layout. So scroll view takes in one child. It allows for scrolling if you're, should the child fill the screen. Then frame, we'll get to this other one too. So Xamarin Forms has a lot of controls, activity indicator. Okay, let me start, let me just give an example with uh, entry. So entry, Xamarin Forms, actually the UI is actually written in XAML. Is if you, are, you should be familiar with XAML, but anyway, we'll still get into it. So an entry in Xamarin Forms is rendered on an iOS as, uh, I don't really know what, I'm not on iOS, so I don't really know what it is. But on Android is rendered as an edit text. Then on Windows is more of a text block, I believe. Yeah. So stepper is for increasing values. You have a minus and plus button, increase, increase and decrease value. Image for viewing image. Image cell is for templates. It has an image and a text. You have a label, you have a button, you have your slider, entry cell, view cell. Cells are usually for templates. List view, search bar, date speaker. We get to explain controls. So accessibility, you can embed views within views. You can embed like you can embed a carousel view within another view, another layout. You can call platform APIs via shared services. 
You can also use dependency services for this. Migration to Xamarin platforms. So Xamarin Form ecosystem comprises components one. There are more than this. Dave Express, Infragistrix, Telerix, Syn Tele Syncfusion gives controls for business clients. So you have Syncfusion charts, graphs, pie chart, and all that. It's really awesome, these guys. Telerik gives much more custom control. So with Telerik, you have a list view that you can customize its children, like in grids, you can have a list of popular e commerce sites, e commerce applications, eBay. It comes with a grid list. So Telerik list view has that. Then platform customization. So with platform customization, it's pretty much uh, if you want a particular feature on a particular field on the UI of on iOS different from Android and on Windows, you can use platform customization to achieve that. So in this example, on the padding on your content page, on the content page, there's a 20 padding on top of iOS. This should is to match up for the status bar on iOS. On Android, no padding. On Windows, no padding. So on Android, this code, this piece of code displays with a 20 padding at the top. All right, native UI from shared code. So this piece of code, this this is a tab page with a content page with a stack layout entry entry button. On Android, it renders and fills material. It fills native. On Windows, it fills native as well. iOS and so. So it's just this one piece of code. No funny extra code. Nothing special, but just this rendered on these three platforms and a few native. So with Android, you have your tabs as usual up here. On Windows, you have your pivot tabs where you have to scroll. And on iOS, your tabs with icons below. So Android, the icon doesn't show, but on the iOS, the icon show because I iOS, that's how the tabs are. Then you have native embedding. I spoke about this earlier. You can add a particular feature, but this native embedding, it works only using shared code project. I'll still get to that. Okay, let's keep this. Now, I've talked about this. Alright. What if we didn't have to write this code? What if we could actually issue a shared code? So you have plugins that accesses APIs on each platform. So let's say for the speech plugin, using the speak hello world, on Android it goes in and uses text to speech API. A Windows speech synthesizer and on iOS every speech synthesizer. So on a Xamarin phone, which is everything shared, in just this single line of code, it renders on these three platforms as each of its own engine. Is that cool like that? So there's a bunch of platforms written mostly by James Montemagno, really great guy. I'll say again, GitHub.com slash Xamarin slash plugins. You can find a bunch of them. There are settings, geolocations, media, camera messaging notifications is, is cool like that all right that's the end of my slide so let's actually get to work on something all right if you haven't set up your system you can head on to store.zamarin.com slash account yeah head to the downloads page you need to log in to download yeah head to the downloads page uh head to the downloads page and uh, you can download the installer actually if you have strong and I really mean strong stable internet, you can just use the installer and it drags everything you need for you and you're set up and good to go. But if you do not have or you have some already and you don't want to waste your time, yeah, you can just get the offline setup, Xamarin on Android, what you really need, and you're good to go. So uh, let's actually get something. Now when you're done, under tools, options. And Xamarin. Okay, uh, this is taking a while. Okay, so you have your JDK, Android SDK, and Android NDK. They should all show the good check mark. Always try and keep everything updated. Xamarin can be funny at times, so always try and keep everything updated. So with that in mind, let's try and create something new. Okay, I think I already have one open here. Okay. I'll use this then, but let me just show how it's been created in new project. So new project, ah, this is quite lagging. Initializing templates. So if you have your Xamarin on Android installed, you should have more templates here, else you, you it won't come up. Cross platform. Now blank app native portable is for your traditional Xamarin. Same here. We won't be using this, maybe some other tutorial will be using it, but for forms, you have your Xamarin blank app, forms portable, 
form shared blank xaml app blank xaml app and stuff and stuff so this is focus on portable and shared portable and shared i'll explain how this works later on but for now let's just go with portable now blank app it gives you a template hard coding your default xamarin page using c sharp now i told you the ui i built using xaml so you might as well want to go for this blank xaml app it gives you an already made xaml page to edit or customize okay i already have one up so let's just cancel this i won't be needing this uh uh, I think I'm done with this. I do not. Okay, let's just save. I don't. I do not want to save. Okay, I do not. Okay, okay, that happened. Never you mind that. Uh, all right. Let's start. You should have other projects: Windows Phone, Windows 8.1, iOS. I don't have a Mac engine connected here, so I'm gonna. I deleted the iOS, and I do not have a UWP installed on this machine. All right. So I haven't touched anything. This is my first code if you run yours yours should look like this abdozamo main page i'm going to run this on android first of all <laughs> show you how this looks like uh okay it's taking a while okay let me explain this is android emulator for visual studio it's really great better than the Okay, let's not let's not point fingers, but it's really great. The Visual Studio Emulator for Android uh, has a lot of much more features. Location, battery, you can take a screenshot, camera, SD card, network, all simulated. It's really great like that. Uh, okay, yep, my app has come up. I don't need it. My app is up. So welcome to Xamarin Forms. This is your blank template. I haven't touched anything. This is your default app. I'm going to close this. Uh, let's run on Windows Phone. I still haven't changed anything. This is a, your normal Windows emulator, Windows Phone 8.1 emulator. Be familiar with it. There. So I want you to notice something with these two applications. Now, same code. On Android, it has a white background with the Android phone. On Windows phone, it had a black background with Windows phone. This is because Windows by default, the application, the background is black, is how it's built. So this is native feel of feel of the of the application. On Android, white background, material themed. On, on Windows phone, like an actual Windows application. Alright, there's something I forgot to point out. When you start your application, the first thing you should always try to update your NuGet package. Now, how do you update a NuGet package? NuGet are actually... Alright, right click on your solution. Manage NuGet packages for solution. Now, you want to update your Xamarin forms. Only your Xamarin forms. Now, this should show updated, but do not update it. Update only Xamarin form. This is going to grab all what it needs. Now, mine is updated already, so I won't really need to do that. Okay, okay, my internet is out. All right, but you need to update your Xamarin forms nuget for your app to run. All right, so that's that. Let's let me let me run through the app. So I have my app.xaml. This is your entry point of your app. App.xaml.cs actually. So every Xaml page had a back Xaml. Okay, Xaml.cs. Your main page of Xaml has a main page Xaml.cs. Now here. Public app initialize component main page is equal to new main page. This new main page, this is your main page. So if I were to change, if I were to have another page here, I would edit it on my main page. Alright, app.xaml, it holds my resources, my application. I'll still get on to this. Now, app.droid, your main activity. This is where it calls your Android app from. On your Windows phone, something similar to so windows phone is similar in structure to xamarin so you should be familiar with it and this is the entry point of your xamarin forms app so if you're a windows developer you should be familiar with this screen if you're an android developer you should be familiar with this this is your on create method okay cortana i did not call you up okay so your android is your on create method 
and i think that's that on the intro so watch out for more videos if you're cool with this subscribe and you'll get notified on my next videos thank you